The topic of this video is graphing functions from the library of functions. One of the things that many of the functions in the library of functions have in common is that the name of the function tells you what you have to do to x in order to get y. For example, in the cube root function, you start with x, you take the cube root, and that tells you y. With the square root function, you start with x, you take the square root, and that gives you y. With this in mind, let's now turn our attention to the reciprocal function. You might remember the word reciprocal. There are two ways to think about a reciprocal. One of the most common ways students learn about reciprocal is to take whatever you have and flip it over. For example, the reciprocal of 2 over 3 would be 3 over 2. But what is the reciprocal of x? If x is our starting input, what would the reciprocal be? Well, x is not a fraction, but it can be written as 1 x over 1. And so, when we start with x and we take the reciprocal, it gets flipped over, and what we end up with is 1 over x. So that's the reason why the reciprocal function is f of x equals 1 over x. x is the input, f is the process, which turns it into 1 over x. Another principle of reciprocals that you may have heard in the past is that when you multiply a number and its reciprocal, you always get the result 1. So for example, we know that the reciprocal of 2 thirds is 3 halves. What happens when you multiply two reciprocals together? The threes cancel, the twos cancel, so everything turns into the number one, and we get one as our final answer. So when you're creating your table of points for the reciprocal function, you want to remember this fact and keep this in mind. Your x and your y will multiply to make one. Okay, great. So let's graph the reciprocal function. Let's start with a really easy value which is 1. All right, well, 1 is the same thing as 1 over 1. And then when you take the reciprocal and you flip it over, it's still 1 over 1, which equals 1. So if x is 1, y is 1. This makes sense, because the x and y need to multiply to make 1, and 1 times 1 is 1. Let's look at another more interesting value, 2. 2 is the same thing as 2 over 1. And when you take the reciprocal, you flip it over, and you get 1 half. So we have 2 for x, then that means we have 1 half for y. Notice that if you multiply 2 times a half, you get a whole, or 1. We can even reverse the order of the numbers. For example, I can put 1 half for the x, and then the y would be 2. Because they just have to have the property that when you multiply them, you get the result 1. All right, let's try 4. The reciprocal of 4 is 1 fourth. And correspondingly, I can swap the order of these. And so with that, I now have these five points. There's just one thing wrong with this collection of points. There are no negative values. So let's explore what happens when we take some of these numbers and we make them negative instead. Let's go back to 1. All right, so negative one. Well, that's the same thing as negative one over one. And when we take the reciprocal and flip it over, we get one over negative one, which still equals negative one. So when x is negative one, y is negative one. And again, this has the property that when you multiply x and y, you get one. Negative times negative is positive. One times one is one. So negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. How about negative 2? Well, negative 2 is the same thing as negative 2 over 1. When you take the reciprocal and you flip it over, you get 1 over negative 2, which is negative 1 half. Negative 1 half. I'd like you to notice that the numbers are exactly the same here. The only thing that's changed is the sign. And from this we learn if the number you start out with is negative, the number you end up with must also be negative. And that allows us to fill in this entire table. Just change all of these numbers to their negative versions. So negative 4, negative 1 fourth, negative 1 half, negative 2, negative 1 fourth, negative 4. Okay, with that in mind, we are now ready to create the graph. So let's do that. This graph uh, requires a bit of space, so I'm going to get rid of my steps here. 
And when we make the scale of the graph, we're going to do so in a slightly different way because we've got fractions in there, and that makes things just a little bit more complicated. But it doesn't have to be difficult, as you'll see. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to put 4 and 4 on my x-axis and y-axis. Then I'm just going to cut in half over and over and over. So halfway across from there to there would be 2. Halfway across from there to there would be 1. Halfway across from there to there would be 1 half. Halfway across from there to there would be 1 fourth. I will now do the same thing with the y values. 4, 2, 1, 1 half, 1 fourth. With just these labels, I can now plot all five of these points. Let's do that. So, let's start with the easiest one. 1, 1. That would be here. All right. 2, 1 half. That means start at the origin, go two spaces to the right, and up just a half. 4, a quarter. 4 to the right and up a quarter would be here. A quarter, 4. Means to the right a quarter, up 4. And a half, 2. Half to the right, up 2 steps. Now before we connect these dots together, there's one thing that I would like to mention here. You might have noticed that in our collections of points, the number 0 does not show up anywhere. And for very good reason. The x and y have to multiply to make 1. If the x or the y was 0, that would not be possible, because 0 multiplied by any number is going to give you 0, not 1. And so for the reciprocal function, 0 is not allowed to be anywhere in our collection of points. And what that means is there are no x or y intercepts. So we have these boundary zones here. These are places where we're not allowed to put points. And you might notice that I'm graphing this as a dashed line. These are asymptotes, which we've learned about in previous videos. So when we graph the reciprocal function, it is absolutely 100% required to draw two asymptotes, one sitting directly on top of the x-axis and one sitting directly on top of the y-axis. This illustrates the idea that the graph approaches but never reaches each one of those axes. All right, we're halfway done. Now we just have to make the rest of the picture. All right, let's do that now. So, we use the same approach. Here's negative 4, and here's negative 4. In fact, I think I'm going to put the labels up above over here. All right, so we cut it in half, and that's negative 2. We cut it in half again, that's negative 1. I'll clear some space here. We cut it in half again, that's negative a half. We cut it a half and again, that's negative a quarter. All right, now on the y's. Cut it in half, negative 2. Cut it in half, negative 1. I'm going to clear to make some space. Cut it in half, negative a half. Cut that in half, negative a quarter. All right, now we can plot all of our points. So negative a quarter, negative 4 means a quarter to the left and 4 down, which would be here. Negative a half, negative 2 means a half to the left, down 2. Negative 1, negative 1, that's easy. Negative 2, negative a half is 2 to the left, down a half. Negative 4, negative a quarter is 4 to the left, down a quarter. And now we connect these dots, and these also are going to approach the x and, a and y axis asymptotically. And so this is the picture that we get. This is what the reciprocal function looks like. Of all of the functions in the library of functions, it's the most interesting, but probably the most complicated. It requires a very specific approach to graph when fractions are involved, especially if you want to maintain the scale of your drawing and not distort or stretch your graph inappropriately. All right, there we go. We've now graphed the reciprocal function.